Hello everyone, uh, Game at Stars 2's Gaming News here. Um, I'm making this quick video right now to basically talk about the news of Activision Blizzard getting hit with a lawsuit about their, um, let's just say, sexual harassment claims. So, well first, let's get into the article by the New York Times before I delve any further into what happened. So, for anybody that isn't currently in the loop or is now just seeing this, Activision Blizzard is being sued by California basically for women being paid less and being discriminated against, and it's described as a culture of sexual harassment. So, uh, let's go further in the article. Uh, California is suing Activision Blizzard because after a two-year investigation, the state's Department of Fair Employment and Housing said in a lawsuit filed Tuesday uh, that they've the Activision Blizzard fostered a frat boy workplace culture, um, executive sexually harassed women, and uh, male employees openly joked about rape and drank alcohol while engaging in inappropriate behavior, and t uh, women were subjected to cube crawls. I'm not entirely sure what that is, and I'm thankful I'm not, but assuming just by uh, context, uh, basically it's just people were getting harassed while in their cubicles. Um, the lawsuit also says that women were paid less than men for similar wor similar work, and they were also less likely to be promoted. And yeah, this is all awful. And the rest of the article goes over how it's a breeding ground for harassment and discrimination against women. Female employees are subject to constant uh, sexual harassment, including having to continually fend off unwanted sexual comments, advances made by co uh, male co-workers and supervisors, and being grouped at cube crawls at and other company events. Um, but what makes this worse, not to say that sexual harassment and being not promoted and pay less is bad enough as it is, but I think what probably catalyzed this case was that in one case, a female employee committed suicide during a business trip as a result of her sexual relationship with a male superior. Before her death, the male colleagues also allegedly shared an explicit photo of the woman, and that's probably what drove her to um, suicide, and this is all awful, and... Yeah, once again, completely, just completely awful. Um, but to move on, Activision's statement said that the picture DFEH paints is not what the Blizzard workplace is today. And they add that the company tries to pay employees fairly and work to address its culture and improve diversity in recent years. Um, Activision employees for years have under undergone anti-harassment training and the company said it had created a confidential reporting hotline and team that investigates employees' concerns among other changes. Um, and then the rest of the statement is, this has no place in our company or industry. Um, and the company said California had failed to properly discuss the accusations with Activision before suing, and it chided the agency, basically saying that, oh, you didn't come to us first to talk about it, and you're just suing. Um, but yeah, uh, that's, y you know, you shouldn't be doing that in the first place, but that's all beside the point. Um, and I can kind of believe some of these claims, particularly like not getting paid as much, kind of. Due to the fact that um, shareholders narrowly approved a $155 million pay package for Bobby Kotick, the executive chief of Activision Blizzard. And yeah, I could definitely see that on top of not only laying off employees while he was still getting paid a lot. Because, you know, if he was cutting his own pay and whatnot, and then he still had to lay people off, I can't blame him. But he didn't even do that. He just paid himself $155 million. And so, yeah, that's basically the gist of what happened. And... While, you know, there's a lot of other instances, I do want to focus on Activision Blizzard before I talk about other companies that also have done this or had similar events happen to them. So in the next segments, I do want to talk about um, some at least personal testimonies that happened at Blizzard. Um, for example, this one tweet says, I quit a job once due to sexual harassment from my boss, um, basically saying there was two instances, one where supposedly the, de the boss asked um, this woman to dance on the desk naked, and then another one, basically how he loves her so much, and uh, the looks he gets when he's being with such a hot woman, and yeah, that's just, that's awful. And so, in the later tweet she says, um, Luckily it wasn't a dream job, could have been a great career, and I worried I wouldn't find another job for a while. Blizzard is a dream job for many, basically saying that she did work for Blizzard. And this is horrible. Now, if this was a one-off, you could just say, oh, it's just a supervisor, oh, it's just them, you know, it's just, you know, it's just one person, one bad apple, but that's not exactly the case here. In the next tweet that I'm going to be showing you, um, this woman also said, I left Blizzard after my boss gaslit me so badly my hair started falling out. My profit sharing, which I've relied on to make ends meet, was docked due to underperforming. 
And when I went to HR to fight it with proof against his claims, I was told maybe you are underperforming. And yeah, this was her dream job and she had to leave because shit like that was happening to her. And, you know, she wanted to go back because she really wanted to work at Blizzard. But again, you know, it was going to probably kill her before she, you know, actually got to fulfill her dream job. And yeah, there's, these are only two testimonies, I'm assuming, out of probably a few hundred knowing the size of Activision Blizzard. And it's just awful to see that this industry still has this prevailing issue of sexual harassment and this culture that's kind of just frat boyish in general. So just to prove that this issue isn't just Activision Blizzard and this is a one-off, let's talk about Riot's um, culture of sexual harassment and sexism. And uh, the first start off, a woman named Lacey wanted to become part of a leadership position, but it was proved impossible. And she left because it's basically impossible for her to get it, and it's just awful to see that. And there was also comments made about her every few months. She said a male boss of hers would comment in public meetings about how her kids and husband must really miss her while she was at work. And that could be seen as an asinine comment, but given the general atmosphere and the general comments made probably prior to that, yeah, that's just... Yeah, that's just... That's just... That's sus. And so... Um... Basically, the rest of the article goes over how she's experienced the sexism within the company and how basically they just let it happen. And it's just been a prevailing issue. And I'm not entirely surprised because the gaming, even if you play multiplayer games, you kind of just know that there's some awful people on there. Not to say that, you know, there aren't awful people in other industries. Like the film industry, we had Harvey Weinstein, awful person, you know, Bill Cosby. We have a ton of awful people, sure, but... It just seems like a lot of these gaming companies, and it's not just like one major person just pulling all the strings, it's multiple major gaming companies that are just doing this. Riot being another one, and the next one I'm going to talk about is Ubisoft. And so next up, we're going to talk about Ubisoft, and while I would like this to article to be, Ubisoft has reportedly made changes, and they have, you know, decreased the number of abuse allegations, they've kicked out people, but unfortunately... Yeah, the practices still aren't working. As you can see here, Ubisoft has reportedly made minimal changes following abuse accusations or allegations. Um, so if you scroll down, since the wave of accusations targeting Ubisoft's toxic culture, which also pointed at serious dysfunction in its HR departments, the company has attempted to make changes, but the impact of these changes seem to have been minimal so far, the publication has reported. Um, basically, you know, the reporting system probably isn't that good. Um, People are still probably treated poorly, and even when it's brought up, nothing's happening. And even worse, some of the men at the heart of this harassment accusations are also still in their jobs, such as Florent, I can't pronounce his name, but Florent, um, who heads Ubisoft's own Nadio, and who was accused of harassment by a dozen employees. A union representative said management is protecting him. Or Ubisoft Singapore director Hughes Record, who stepped down in November, but still works with Ubisoft in a different role. Um, yeah, basically... These people are still being protected, and even after all the shit that went down with the amount of sexual harassment that went on in Ubisoft, they just haven't changed anything. The abuse is still going to happen, particularly with Florent um, and Hughes Record. Sure, he may not be, you know, in his director seat anymore at Singapore, but he's still there. He can still hold power over these people, and it's just, it's awful. And in Canada, nothing has changed since the appointment of Christophe Durenes? I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, what's more, new harassment, harassment cases have been reported since, but those who reported the issues were sidelined in December of 2020. So this issue is a prevail, it seems to be prevailing in a majority of these major companies, and it's just awful to see that it's not changing and that this is kind of the norm almost. I hate to say it, but it just seems to be the norm in a majority of these companies. So what's the major takeaway from this? these companies are getting away with, you know, sexual harassment or whatnot, that's, like, the only thing we could get away, that you could take away from this, and that they are letting it happen, essentially. And even if they were to get sued and whatnot, it's still probably going to happen. As I showed before, Ubisoft, the changes are minimal, and there are new harassment claims coming in, and yet they're being sidelined. And I wish I could just say that this is one person doing it, or no, just fire him, it's simple, you know? Just get rid of him, easy. But that's not the case, it's a workplace culture. The male employees are joking about rape and going through cube crawls, which I'm assuming is just stalking the female employees while they work. And it's just, it's awful to watch all of this and just be like, oh yeah, this this is kind of normal. 
Like this is seen throughout the whole industry, and it just it just seems that I don't know. I just I don't think there's gonna be much change at this point. Sure, you know they could get hit with a lawsuit, but people will still play their games whether or not they know of it or it or you know or they just don't care about it. And it's awful to see that this is probably still going to you know prevail even after this lawsuit. It doesn't matter if they lose; they're still gonna you know continue probably doing this. Ubisoft. There's, they still have harassment claims. The people that are perpetuating the harassment, they're still in the, they're still in, and it's just like why, why is this happening? And I just I don't get how they can't just get rid of them. Is it that hard? Do you really need those people to be leading others? You know, it's just it doesn't make sense to me. So I don't know. At this point, sure, Activision has responded with, oh, we don't do that here, but. This is that. That's just a preliminary response. I'm going to guarantee that the next response is going to be, "Oh yeah, we're sorry about that. Uh, we're going to try to do better," and then it's not going to happen. And I hate to see that. I really do. And I don't know. There's not much else I can just say besides we gotta we have to try to do something. At least in my case, I'm been boycotting Activision Blizzard, and I make my hate for Bobby Kotick very well known. If you watch this channel, uh, but I just. I'm not sure what we're supposed to do at this point, because at least Call of Duty is like one of the biggest franchises, and unless people really just say, we're not buying the next Call of Duty, we're going to stop playing Warzone, Activision Blizzard will continue this. Really, they will. I just, I don't think anything's going to change, and it breaks my heart to say that. But unfortunately, that's all the news for at least today. Uh, you still get your regular Sunday video. I'll probably go over more uh, of the Activision Blizzard case, if there's anything that comes up, but yeah, this is this is awful, but... Hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully that, you know, Activision Blizzard go, okay, we're trying to defend ourselves, but, you know, we'll, we'll change now. For sure we had our first statement, but we'll change now. Because otherwise, you know, this the whole stigma around gaming about how it's a guy's thing and that uh, women are not safe in it, it it's just going to be perpetuated further. You know, multiplayer games, sure, you could just say, oh, people are shitty. They're going to just say sexist things and whatever. And you can only just try to moderate it by, you know, banning the users or, you know, chat banning them. But... For these companies, the heads of the leadership are perpetuating this, and there's just how do you how do you fix that besides kicking them out? But when it's everybody, how do you fix that? I don't think you really can. So I don't know. We'll see in the future if anything happens. I'll let you guys know if anything happens. Uh, so uh, everybody, stay safe. Uh, if you are being harassed, do tell some other people and try to get help because I'd hate to see you, you know, being in that position. So. Stay safe, everybody, and um, I'll see y'all later.